Deuteronomy 31. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. It's an old man. I can no more go out and come in. I don't know what that means because, I mean, he's, he's going to climb a mountain again. Before he dies, he climbs a mountain and he sees all the land of Israel. So I don't know what that coming in and coming out. Also, the Lord has said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. That's because he got angry and smoked the rock twice. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee. So God has not left Moses. And it's not that he's incapacitated, because I said he's going to climb a mountain. And he will destroy these nations from before thee. And thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. Now we are coming to the end of Moses. We are coming to the final words of Moses. He is now has now instructed the nation of Israel that's going to go into the promised land, what their laws, what their duties, what their activities, what their commandments, statutes. And now he's going to die. Joshua's taken over. And before Joshua takes over, Moses is like, you, you know, you better not behave like you behave to me. I'm dying, but that does not give you an excuse to... Because, oh, we got a new man, Joshua. We're going to play. We're going to have fun. We're going to have good time. And we're going to abuse Joshua. We're going to take him. No, you absolutely do not. So he's setting forth the children of Israel. Joshua's the one. As much as God is with me, God's going to be with Joshua. He shall go over before thee, as the Lord has said. And the Lord shall do unto them... As he did to Sion and to Og. There is that, that guy gets mentioned many times. King of the Amorites. And unto the land of them whom he destroyed. Okay, what's Moses saying here? And you got to point this out in this generation. Do you remember what God did to, to, to Og? Do you remember the victory you had to Sion? You remember? We won. Go into the land that God's given you, what we did and what is not our land. You wait to see what God's going to do to you in the land that he promised you. Yeah, there were giants in there. Remember the spies, ten of them? But you're going to go in there and kick butt. Caleb, 80 years old, 85 years old. He's going to go in there and he's going to kick some giant butt. Remember. And there's a lot of things that we are to remember as Christians. We ought to keep a, a prayer book, a prayer. I don't mean say prayer. I mean, we ought to write down, I want this person to be saved. Oh, Lord God, I got this ailment. Lord, my wife has got this. Lord God, can I have, please have this? And then when, when the Lord answers those prayers, put that date down that you prayed for it and pray and put down the date that God answered that prayer. Whether it be yes, no, or not now. And you go back through your prayer book and you say, wow, I forgot all about that. Look what the Lord did for me. Did I even thank you, Lord? Man, that was so minute to what I'm going through today. And you got to realize, if you have problems today, in most cases, not all, next year at this time, a year, 365 days from this time, you will probably not even know or remember what God, what things you're going. Now, you may. Listen, you got a back injury. you got troubles with the flesh. I mean, pain. And, and, okay, you may have life long. But there's a lot of things in our life that we ask God, we pray to God about. And about 365 days later, we forget. We have a record. And Moses is advising children of Israel, remember the victories. And yet, there are going to be more victories, more. More. And more and more and when you face the children that are in the land that is your land and you have fear and you have doubt remember Og remember Sion God's with you 
And there's times that Satan, today, got, Satan got me, you know, doubting my salvation. I just went back to where I was. April 21st, 1987, when I, bent, when I knelt down and asked God to save me. He said, God, at that point, I do believe. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood, his atonement, his gospel. If anything else, Lord, I plead it now, but I'm saved. Go back to your Bethel. Go back to the victories that God's given you. That's what he's telling them. And the Lord shall give them up before your face. That ye may do unto them according to all the commandments which I commanded you. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Be strong. You realize in, in this world we are raising boys to be girls. I saw a picture the other day. They, they, little boys are wearing makeup and fixing their hair. And, oh, that's not being strong. That's not going to prepare for you, for the Muslims that are going to come to this nation if they come in to defeat us. That's not going to protect you from the fierce Russians if they come and attack us. When you got sissy panty waist males. Have good courage. Strong and good courage. Even as the children of God. There is no Christian that should be a weakling. There is no Christian, uh, uh, what do I do, what do I do? Fear not. Be, nor be afraid of them, your enemy. For the Lord thy God, there he is. He it is that doeth, or doth, not it, doth do good. He that doth go with thee. God's walking with you. God's beside you. And as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian on this side of Calvary, you're saying God is indwelling in you. He's with you and in you through the Holy Spirit. He'll never leave thee or forsake thee. The only thing you can break that fellowship with God is if you sin. you got unconfessed sin. You are an unclean vessel, which we've seen already. There's still the people of God. There's, their sins have separated them from God. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Does that sound like us? He'll never leave thee or forsake thee. And it's kind of funny because is it Paul or James says that the Lord said he'll never forsake thee. And you can't find that anywhere in the Gospels. And yet here it says right here, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel, so it's open. There's nothing secret. There's nothing hidden. There's no back room meetings. All Israel is witnessing. In the sight of all Israel, be strong. It's the same message for the people. And of good courage, it's the same message for the people. Joshua, you are a representative of those people. What I tell them, I tell you. What a church does it will be the attitude of the pastor. What the family does to the children will be the attitude of the parents. If the church is a failure, the pastor is a failure. If the, if the family's broken, it's because the parents are broken. You know, you cannot say to Junior, you can't do this. And then you turn around and do it yourself. That's, hypocr that's hypocrisy. Yeah, that's in the churches and the family today. Joshua, you get the same challenge that the people get. Be strong of good courage. For thou must go with this people. <laughs> that's kind of weird to say to Joshua. I'm wondering, Joshua, like, oh, my. <laughs> oh no. After all what they've done to you, Moses, and you're going to put me, put them on me? <laughs> Go with the, this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. You're the military leader now, Joshua. You go in and fight. I gave them the law. You go and fight. And the Lord... He it is that doth go before thee. Same thing with the people. Same thing with Joshua. So Joshua is the same as the people, and the people are the same as Joshua. Joshua is not lifted on any pedestal. 
Now, he's given a position of authority, but he's still as much as the people are. They're not to worship Moses. They're not to worship Joshua. They're to worship God. And a vessel cleaner and, and more instructive is Joshua for the people. Someone to look to as guidance. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. That's the same thing he told the people. Verse 6. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Same thing he told the people. Neither be dismayed. Be just like the people, Joshua. You're no better. Listen, you've got the pastor or a priest or somebody in the pulpit of the church, and they're much better than you are, and they're, they're you know, we're the ones that God tells us, and you don't do to us, blah, 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 blah. We condemn you and all that. That is Nicolaitan. And God says in Revelation, I hate that. Nicolaitan is, we are the clergy. You are the peasants. You are the sinners. That was a Pharisee. Jesus, you are sitting with that sinner? Ew. We don't have nothing to do with Jesus. He's with those sinners. We are the... That's Nicolaitanism. And that's what God said. Joshua, don't you be that head over the people like you are, the, you know, the head. You are the, 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 road, the golden rod. You are the rod to smack them in the head. No, that's not you, Joshua. You fear them. You fear God. They fear God. You be strong, they be strong. Don't be dismayed, they're not to be dismayed. After all, in this government, the priests are the highest. I've even heard Baptists say, oh, church and state. Well, what do you call here? You've got the priests that are in charge. And the priests are under God. And God is over the priest. The king would come to the priest for the Urim and Thurim and say, Hey, what am I supposed to do, David? Going to God. I have no idea. Let me get the priest and find out. If you get a church state system with God the Father, Jehovah, is in charge of the nation, are you going to say that's wrong? If God were to speak to a nation today, say, I want you to get all those filthy gods out. I want you to get all those filthy heathens out. I want you to get rid of all those things that make me jealous and that anger me. Are you going to say that's church and state as a Christian, as a Baptist? And then you're going to cry, well, we want a revival. Not if you don't remove the mess that we read about last night. We got it wrong. See, Americans don't want to be persecuted for the word of God, but they want the blessings. And Moses called Joshua. In verse 8, the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto the, all the elders of Israel. So he appears before the high priest. Now, the high priest, the priest, they're the ones in charge. Moses would call to them. But who is bearing the ark? Remember, this is Moses' family. Moses is of Levi. But let's go to Numbers 3.29 to remember who is carrying that ark. Numbers 3.29. If you listen to if you listen to these messages and you get my Bible trivia, you'll get the answer. In Numbers 3.29. And the families of the sons of Korah which pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward, and then goes through it. Verse 31. And their charge shall be the ark, the table, and the candlestick. So when we're over here in Deuteronomy 31, that tabernacle is built, that ark is there, the staves are there. And when he says, bring that ark of the covenant, he's standing before the high priest, Aaron's sons. And then, I don't know if they whistle or blow the trumpet, but bring the ark. Here comes Korah. And they've got the Ark of the Covenant that stays on their shoulders and they walk up and there's the Ark. And again, that's Moses' family. 
When you go back to your genealogy of Moses and Aaron, their father was of Levi. Now you're, you're going forth, and now you're going to Joshua, who I believe was of Judah. No, he, I don't know what that is, right? Caleb was in Judah, or, or Joshua was Judah, I forget now. But here comes the priest, here comes the high priest, here comes Korah carrying the ark right now. They have stepped up with the ark. Because no one else can touch that ark. Go ask David. There's only one way you're supposed to transport that ark. Go ask David. David brought a brand new... I'll get a cart, but I'll, I'll make it brand new. That's not good enough. So, here comes the cart. Here comes Korah. Has to be. Which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And unto all the elders of Israel. Everybody that's in charge. Moses commanded them saying, at the end of every... Now, now this is great. This is great. All right? It's an assumption, but it's great. I'll say that. Moses commanded them at the end of every seven years. In the solemnity of the year of release. In the Feast of Tabernacles. We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll get that. Feast of Tabernacles. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, that's Jerusalem. That's wonderful. That's great. Thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Okay? Gather all the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger, Gentiles, that is within thy gates. That they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and deserve to do all the words of this law. Now, assumption, 99, uh, I'll, I'll say 95% chance. 100% Jesus Christ is not born on December 25th. 100%. But in the seventh month, I forget which number day it is. The Feast of Tabernacles. Would, hmm? The tenth of the seventh month. The Feast of Tabernacles. It was one of them times that all the males were, were to appear before Jerusalem. Here they're supposed to appear every seven years. All men and women and Gentiles. Now if you already know where I'm probably going with this. If this is the birthday of Jesus, the Feast of Tabernacles, and if the one of the seven years were to be the, that year that Jesus was born, and we don't know what year it was. We got a Roman Catholic uh, calendar. If Jesus was born in the Feast of Tabernacles and eight days later brought to Jerusalem, do you realize what was going on in Jerusalem that moment if this is the time? If, 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 me, if, not sure, if, Deuteronomy 31, verse 9 and 10, Moses says, On the Feast of Tabernacles, you're to gather everybody together at the year of release. If it's the time of Jesus, when he was born, and when his parents brought him to Jerusalem to be circumcised the eighth day and named Jesus, if this is the same year that Moses is speaking about, you could probably, somebody could probably run it to see if it's true. I have it. You realize that according to the law of Moses, everybody would have been there when Jesus was born. Now, isn't that fascinating? Not only did Mary obey the law and offer a sin offering, but she would have told all Israel present to have the law be read, Deuteronomy. The entire nation of Israel should have been there when hey, this baby Jesus, God is with us. Miraculous something with angels and shepherds speaking a few miles from Bethlehem. Remember that? Those shepherds would have gone into Jerusalem by the law. And, hey, you know what we saw? Aren't you guys that saw angels and saw that baby? Right? Yeah. Hey, there's the parents right there. Wouldn't that have been interesting? The word... Of the law. Now remember the other night we ran the word John 1.1. 1, 1? Can you imagine Mary. And we don't know what happened to Joseph. 
So let's say Mary. She's got the little lamb in her arms. <laughs> and can you imagine if the priests and the people there are reading the law, the words, and there is Jesus in the arms of Mary, who's just been named. Jehovah with us. Wouldn't it be interesting? I don't know. That law was read. Those people were there, including Gentiles. There's the word of God. There is the one that fulfilled the law right there in Mary's arms in Jerusalem, according to the law. Wouldn't that have been interesting? Now I'm saying if, if he was born in the Feast of Tabernacles, and if this, this would be the same year that Jesus was born. I would think they would be. Just how God works. But I am not going to go 100%. I'm going to go 99.99, 99%. And I could be wrong. I could be a sinner. And I could get ashes. But there's something to think about. Moses said, verse 9, And Moses wrote this law and delivered it to the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant Lord unto all the elders of Israel. Here's all the elders. There's all the important people. Here's the priests. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemn, solemnity of the year of release, that would probably be, that, that looks like the Jubilee. In the Feast of the Tabernacles, that's the seventh month, the tenth day. It's great to have a wife that listens and, and hears what you say. A lot of times when I forget. God's truly given me a help me. When all Israel, when all Israel, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. That's Jerusalem. That is where Jesus is circumcised and named. That is where Anna shows up. That's where Simeon the priest shows up. And he says, Lord God, I have seen your child. I have seen the anointed one. Now please let me die. Thou shalt read this law, Deuteronomy. Jesus fulfilled all the law before all Israel in their hearing. Eight days later, if the shepherds did what God told them to do, if they were Jewish, they would be in Jerusalem too. They would be celebrating. They would still be talking about those angels and that baby in the manger and people would be still talking and hearing. You remember what the Bible says about those shepherds? It says they went and told everybody when they left. We get it all mixed up. We put the wise men with Jesus in his birth. That's wrong. That's a lie. That's a, why can't we get the fact is that maybe the shepherds even showed up before or ahead or after Mary and Jesus shows up and they're still talking about those angels and here comes the law. Here comes the fulfillment of the law. Here comes the prophet like it unto Moses. And he's there in his mother's arms. And when do you see Jesus next? He's 12 years old. It's the feast of uh, 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 Passover. And he's beguiling these, these doctors of the law and everything. Like, what does this kid know? How does he know? He's God. I didn't mean he might beguile. He'd be amazed. He, he, he astonished them. 12 year old kid who knows it all literally didn't 12 years later didn't you, didn't you hear the story didn't you know didn't you listen to Simeon didn't you listen to Anna didn't you hear the shepherds they knew who Jesus was I guarantee Nicodemus said I know who you are gather the people together men and women and children all right, let's say by chance, Joseph, Mary, Jesus. How's that? And thy stranger, let's get the Gentiles involved. That is, when thy gates, they may hear. We heard the hear, hear over here before. We got that hear the word of God, who is Jesus. That they may learn and fear the Lord your God. That'd be Jesus, too. Observe to do all the words of this law. Jesus did all the word. Jesus did all the law. The only one that could do all the words of this law would be Jesus. Now, wouldn't that be a great topic there? Be Jesus. Moses sinned. Anger. 
Aaronson, Elijahson, Elijahson, Isaiahson, all the kings sin. If Jesus is subject, that is the only one that can do all the words of this law. And their children, or excuse me, and that their children, which have not known anything. Oh, 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 oh. What did Moses, Moses says, you haven't been teaching your children right. That their children which have not known anything. So most of them did not know who Jesus was, according to the scriptures. They weren't waiting for Jesus. You know what they wanted to make Jesus a king of? Let's get rid of this Roman oppression we have. We'll take the oppression from the Romans gone, but we don't want God. That's the whole entire book of Judges. Joshua, Jesus, Jehovah saves. We got a book called Joshua coming up next. And Joshua dies. And we got a book called Judges. And they just live every way, but they want to live however they want to live. And when they get in trouble, oh God help us. And when we're done, we don't want God no more. Anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. You got to learn how to fear God. And who's the one that you can learn how to fear God in the context of verse 13? Is your parents. Parents, you teach your children who to fear. Well, if trouble comes my way, I'll click, click, I'll just shoot them. Okay. That's not fearing God. How about just praying to God and let God trust you? What about all those people that died at the stake and all that? They died for the word of God. How many people can you find died in the Bible for the word of God? Let me guess. Thirteen? Thirteen, yeah. Peter, James, Andrew, Paul, John, Jesus. You ever see Jesus take up a, a, a weapon? In the land whether you go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. <laughs> Imagine when God comes up to you, you must die. Well, I'll go get a pill. I'll go see the doctor. You must die. Call Joshua. And present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. Can you imagine someone taking a Bible today? And they were, uh, I know someone who's drawing the Bible out wonderfully great. It, it shows the Bible truth that this woman's doing. But can you imagine someone modern today? Oh, Moses, go call Joshua. You see them drawing a picture with Moses with a cell phone. With Joshua speed dial. <laughs> I know. And the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. Now Joshua never went to any school. And God's going to ordain him. How he lived. How he helped Moses. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in the pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of clouds stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, Abraham's bosom. Moses is where Abraham and Lazarus went. And this people, this congregation, will rise up and go whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. Now, does that happen? Well, there's prophecy that happened. We've seen, here is prophecy written out and it happens. God is a God of prophecy 100%. He said, well, there are prophecies that Jesus hasn't fulfilled yet. Oh, amen, glory to God, because he's going to. How's that? As much as the, he, he died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the scriptures, the Bible says, oh, he hasn't come back yet. I know, but he is. God's 100% prophecy, sure. 
So go ahead, Nick, pick the prophecies that not happen. It will happen. How's that? They go whoring after the God. I love that. Whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. Whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. So see, it's the people, not God. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day. And I will forsake them. He said over here in verse 6, nor forsake thee. But the contradiction is, and will forsake me. And break my covenant, which I made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. They forsook God first, not God forsaking them. Let's get it right. Don't throw that in there as a contradiction that God said, I'll never forsake thee or leave thee. And then, oh, look at God forsook them. No, you forgot they forsook him first. You've got to leave God first before he gets you out. I preach today about the love of God. There is no love of God today if you reject Jesus Christ. I will hide my face from them. Deuteronomy 28. And they shall be devoured. Deuteronomy 28. And many evils, plural, and trouble shall befall them. Deuteronomy 28. So that they will say, in that day, in that day, I got Mark passage over here if you don't mind in that day that's, that's a particular expression one of them expressions in the bible like oh mark it let me if i mark my bible are not these evils come upon us because no one there they mark because why the reason because the reason thereof our God is not among us. But why? Don't go blaming God. You left him. God didn't leave you. And as a person who is a Christian, by the salvation grace of Jesus Christ, even if you do commit outlandish sins and wicked sins, and you think that God is forsaking you, he's still indwelling in you, he's just not active. And you're not on friendly terms if you are born again Bible believing Christian. When Jesus said, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, that's absolutely true. But there's a fellowship of God that, hey, I'm filthy and unclean. And God says, hey, you got to be holy or I'm holy. You don't want to be holy? I'm in you, but you're still my son. And there are plenty of children out there, sons and daughters, you know, they've been ostracized by their family, but they're still the family. So get the fact is, what we're learning is, Israel left God, not God leaving Israel. The results of Israel leaving God, God said, fine, I'll just sit back and watch. We read today in Judges, Dan comes in and picks up the Roman Catholic religion. And then they go kill a city. You sit back and say, well, why did God allow that? Weren't they wicked? Oh, he'll get them. They'll go into captivity. Dan only begun that fuse that would burn and blow up later. Isn't it great that sometimes God has a long fuse that he lights in our lives? And at any point, we can stop that fuse from burning and say, God, I'm sorry, I repent the blood of Jesus Christ. I am so sorry. And he may cut that wick. Say, okay, fine. Or he may pull that wick out even further. Say, okay, but... Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What soul a man soweth, that you shall also reap. But get the fact is, God doesn't leave us. We leave God. The only time God left man is, is in the garden. He says, get out of here. i got to drag you out. But why? Because they left God and disobeyed his word. Verse 18, I will surely hide my face. 18, 666. In that day, Ooh, I marked that one too. Terrible, but uh, missing things today. Six, six, six. I will lead them in that day. I will first. I'll hide my face in that day. In that day. In that day. That's also reference to Jacob's trouble. 
the, the sixth day, before the seventh day, the millennium. God removes his spirit during, the, during Jacob's trouble. For all the evils which they shall have wrought, what you do, what you make. Wrought iron is when you take iron and you shape it and you do things with it. In that they have turned unto other gods. That's the cause of God saying, all right. You got other gods? God's not with you. I don't care. You read what it read. Now, therefore, write ye this song for you, and that'll be the next chapter, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be witness for me against the children of Israel, and that'll be the next chapter. So that's the purpose of chapter 32, the Song of Moses. What is it? It's to be taught. It's to be put in their mouths. It is a witness against the children of Israel. So it's not a song to be sung in a Christian Sunday school. It's a song to be sung and taught to the children of synagogue. Maybe how sometimes I get a word in my mouth and it goes bye-bye. It's a song that's to be taught by the parents to their Jewish children, even today. Because they are in rebellion against Jehovah. For when I shall have brought them into the land, which I swear unto their fathers, Joshua, that floweth with milk and honey, supply all your nutrients, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat. I don't understand that word waxen. Because when I think of a candle, it goes down. But waxen fat, more and more, bigger and bigger. Then shall they turn unto other gods, they do, and serve them, they do, and provoke me, and they do, and break my covenant, which they do. Prophecy. Can you imagine? Now let's look at it like this. Here's God telling Moses, their pastor, the congregation you have are going to be a failure. Do you know God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit tells you that the church, when it comes to the time of the rapture, is a failure? It will go into apostasy. It will not get better. It will get worse. It will anger God. You make God sick. And we got a group of people today. Oh, we're just doing great and wonderful things. God is just blessing us. We're just so wonderful. There's revival breaking out everywhere. And when I preach on the streets of Daytona Beach and there are a bunch of people before me and they're just going on like a bunch of cattle or a bunch of sheep, a bunch of ghosts, a bah, a moo, how much is that? And they don't even want to care or ever hear about God but one man in what? Three, day, three weeks? What revival? And it shall come to pass when many evils, notice the S, evils, and troubles, S, Jacob's trouble, are befallen them, Israel, that this song shall testify against them. Oh, oh, as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouth of their seed. In 2018, Lord, it shall not be forgotten. So according to that, there are some synagogues out there. There are some Jewish children that are still learning Deuteronomy 32. They still do the Passover. They still do the book of Esther. If you can find Jewish children that know Deuteronomy 32 or the Song of Moses, that prophecy is being fulfilled, but we've already read a prophecy about the children of Israel going whoring after other gods. We know that prophecy is fulfilled, so we know that this prophecy of this song is still being taught according to what God. And I believe Revelation 15, let's go there. I was going to look this up yes, tomorrow. 
or Monday. But Revelation 15, I think this is the, if I'm wrong, 15.3. Yeah, 15.3. I was going to look this one, but watch this. Now, this is in the tribulation period time. We don't know when the tribulation is going to happen. We don't know what year. Now, according to this, the book, the Bible I have, it says Deuteronomy 31, 32 is written 1451 BC. And I don't know if it's right. Or I don't know if it's wrong. That is 1451 years before the birth of Christ. We are 2018 years, supposedly, thereabouts, we don't know, after the birth of Christ. We are in the midst of the tribulation period, three and a half years, thereabouts. Actually, we're at the end of the tribulation period, the seventh year. And we find in Revelation 15, 3, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. That will be chapter 29, uh, 32, excuse me, 32. And the song of the Lamb. There are Jewish people going to sing the song of Moses. We're going to study, Lord willing, Monday. And there will be Jewish people who will sing to the capital L, the Lamb of God, we think, wait, there will be salvation to the Jews. How can you say when you're going to sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, capital L, that God's all finished with the Jew? In the midst, at the end thereof, of Jacob's trouble. How can you say that? Let's read a verse more. Saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of the saints. That will be the testimony of the Jews. This is the seven vials. I'm looking here. It says, I saw, verse 1, another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, were seven angels having the seven last plague, and for in them filled the wrath of God. And in this, and these Jewish people are on or in by the throne of God. And the song of Moses is going to be sung. Sung. In heaven. And the song of the Lamb by Jewish people. And there are people who say they're all done, God's all done with the Jews. Not in the tribulation period, he's not. In verse 21 in Deuteronomy, the song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall for it shall not be forgotten out of their mouths of their seed. So they gotta be gotta be taught. For I know their imagination. <laughs> Go back to Genesis. With, with Noah and their imagination, which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Even before they're in that land, I already know they're going to fail. The foreknowledge of God. The foreknowledge that God writes this and knowing that there's a specific date and time, an hour and minute and second that his son is going to die on that cross for their sins. And he even knows they're going to reject them. He even knows the Gentiles are going to come in. He even knows when the church is going to be raptured. He even knows that seven year tribulation period. And he knows in heaven that this song, chapter 32, is going to be sung. And it's going to be sung with the song of the capital L Lamb that... John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There will be Jews that are going to believe on Jesus in the tribulation. As there are Jews that believe on Jesus today. Moses therefore wrote this song, and we're going to, Lord willing, Monday, the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge. And said, Be strong again, and of good courage again, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them. Wait a minute. He, Moses, gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Moses saying, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear. Something happened there. We've gone from Moses talking to God saying, I swear unto them. I will be. That's not Moses spoke, speaking. Moses said nothing. 
Moses cannot make that promise. While Moses is speaking to Joshua, God stepped in. How do you like that? If Moses said, I swear unto him, I will bring them with him, Moses would blast me. Moses would be a sinner. A great taking. While, while Joshua is there before the people, Moses says, be strong, good, courage. And God steps in there as I swear unto them. Now, you just imagine that. That's what a lot of preachers think. Well, God is speaking through them. No, no. Only through Joshua did, did God speak, mo putting Moses off to the side. And it shall come to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it's now finished. And it's done. It's complete. Until they were finished. And Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant, we looked at that earlier, of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be with, it may be there for a witness against thee. Now, I said, Korah brought the Ark, but Korah couldn't do this. The Bible says even Korah couldn't see the ark they couldn't touch the ark they had to wait for the high priest to go there and cover it and then with the proof of the and the and the, the, the the high priest saying okay now you may take it so this book of the law would be handed to the high priest Aaron's son he would lift the covering it's covered we go back in the early studies it is covered he would lift it up and it says now watch this watch this in the side of the ark they did not remove the mercy seat here's a question how on earth did they get the word of god on the side of the ark was there a pocket there what what, what is it for the covenant of the lord thy, your god that it may be there for a witness against thee. it's covered the Ark of the Covenant is covered by the curtains of the tabernacle. Unless those curtains have a special spot for that word of God. And it, the, the covering is not lifted, but it's put like into a pocket in those curtains. That the only thing you would see when you see the Ark is you would see the coverings of the tabernacle. And then you would see Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That way it may be taken out. I don't know. I'm just, just reading what the Bible says. For I know thy rebellion <laughs> and thy stick, stiff neck. What a great testimony of God's people. What do you think God says about his church? You're naked. <laughs> You're miserable. <laughs> what did we read that the other night? That's what God thinks. Behold, while I am yet alive with you, this day, Moses speaking, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And how much more after my death, after God told him. Think about Moses now. And now he's giving this charge to Joshua. Oh, man. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribe and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record, to record against them. We read that last night. For I know, I know that after my death, ye shall surely corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I commanded you. God said it, and now Moses said it. And evil will befall you in the latter days. Whoa. Get that latter days. At the end of Latter rain. Because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Moses spake in the, in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. And we'll pick up the song tomorrow and pretty soon Moses is going to go. He's going to die with the opinion of these people. You ain't going to do it at all.